music for everyone is, is pretty much a, a, a life-sustaining tool that we all use, uh, whether we're really conscious of that or not. Essentially, music is such a whole brain phenomenon. It involves such a distributed network across the brain. We'll talk about the, the beating of the heart and the sound of breath, the rhythms of life, you really get underpinned at an early stage in development before the child has any sense of language. So music therapy, you think, might be tapping into something really quite primitive in our development? I, I, think that's, I think that may be the case. So I'm Stephen Sanford and I'm the clinical lead music therapist here at Chelsea and Westminster Hospital. We know that through the ages music has been used as part of ritual, as part of bringing communities together, as a means for communication, perhaps even before language developed, music existed in some shape or form. Uh, music often becomes very important for those patients who are at the latter stages of of life and may be impacted with a condition such as dementia or Alzheimer's. So I'm Mike Crawford, I'm a professor of mental health research at Imperial College uh, and I'm also a clinician who works in a local mental health service. One of the most interesting observations in this area I think is the way that people with advanced dementia who may have lost the power to speak uh, still have the uh, ability to sing and remember words of songs. Uh, music therapy used to be linked predominantly to spaces like this, so there was a sort of designated music therapy room, uh, but now the, the breadth of music therapy has widened to include a whole new range of contexts. And a really good example of that is the Memory Lane project here at Chelsea and Westminster, using music to help people maintain their level of functioning in the context of very difficult chronic degenerative conditions. So I'm Lauren Stewart, I'm a professor in psychology at Goldsmith, so we do research looking at different aspects of um, music and the mind and also music in the brain. This study here is a single case study of um, a woman who suffered a stroke um, and it's measuring activation across the brain before a period of music therapy and then after. And what you can see here is the right hand, which is the affected hand after the stroke, and this is the unaffected hand. And therapy was able to normalise the pattern of activity. So this is the difference that the therapy made. So before the therapy, you can see that when the patient was in the scanner performing a simple manual task, there's a great deal of widespread activation in the left hemisphere. And then after therapy, um, you can see much more discrete and focal activation, as if the music therapy has kind of normalised the pattern of activity and it becomes much more like the pattern that you see in the unaffected hand. These are motor areas 
Um, and so it's likely that essentially when your pathways are impaired due to the damage from stroke, essentially you're trying to recruit a wide network of areas because the most specific and relevant pathways are damaged. But after practice and in a period of music therapy, you can hone those relevant neural circuits so that they can kind of support the physical act themselves rather than having to draw on surrounding cortical areas that are less specialised for that kind of movement. If we're thinking about uh, accessing memories in, in conditions like dementia, it may be very relevant that music can um, activate a distributed network of areas because then the chances are that you are able to draw upon some processes that have not been diminished or impaired by the disorder. Thank you. Sabrina. Thank you so much. Any more questions? That's like the one you like, someone to watch over me. Maria, can you have someone to watch over me? Someone to watch over me, that's a great choice. <laughs> Good taste. I tell you the truth, my wife died last week and it's uh, just very uplifting. I didn't get an opportunity to pick one. It's uplifting, so. something really interesting that happens in the brain when, when music is used with, with these patients. There's a responsiveness often from those patients. Perhaps that's their experience of being able to reminisce more actively on who they are and who they've been in relation to the relationship they have had. You know, there are an awful lot of things in the world which are good, but I think the NHS, particularly at a time of financial restraint, needs to spend its money wisely on those interventions which can bring about cost-effective treatments. And uh, I, I'm not sure that's the case for all arts therapies, for all conditions. But I suspect that there are conditions where art, some arts therapies for some mental health conditions are as or more effective than uh, currently available treatments. The evidence for music therapy is very important in a context like the NHS where the political climate, the financial climate is, is constantly under scrutiny. If you have a brother or a son or a sister who has dementia who's not responding to drug treatments, should we be offering music therapy? Should we be offering drug treatments? What should we be doing? And I think it's really important that we spend some of our resources trying to answer the questions that really matter now to patients and those who care for them. And I'm really pleased that there seems to be a little bit of a pendulum swing now to think about the arts as being really important in sustaining our own well-being. You don't take a musical pill and feel better. But now there's much more music therapy being used and music in general being used as a means to tackle bigger issues, which moves us beyond thinking about simply a medical model for treatment of illness to thinking about a much more inclusive social community response. Patients are fragile, vulnerable people. They're not people you can easily put in a brain scanner and in many cases music therapists will not care in the slightest what is going on in the brain and I have some sympathy with that view myself. Really 
often it's behavioural change that you're, that you're after. What is very clear and evident and can't really be disputed from my perspective is the fact that music brings people together in a very helpful way often. And you'll see in countries like America, Australia, lots of parts of Europe, you know, a quest to find out more about why music is so important, why music works. I was admiring the dancing earlier and telling her how nicely she danced. You know what she said? Oh, go on, miss. <laughs> 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 Next time, better. Yeah. Next time, would you? I'll take you back to your seat. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to remain sitting or standing? Sitting. Just sit before you answer. Yeah. <laughs>